Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. My name is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marque of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online that is looking at life, everyday life, everyday issues through God's perspective, not just God's perspective, but I mean the perspective of His Word. Christianity is not an event. Christianity is a continuous life that's happened. I just didn't give my life to Christ and uh, walking around, I'm a Christian. No, the life I practice depicts my Christianity or is, shows my Christianity. So Christianity is about life and um, here are a few principles that I learned and those principles that I learned are in God's Word. Here is my take. Have you ever read the story of Numbers chapter 20 verse 11? One of the most interesting stories over there and that interesting story was uh, something between God and Moses. God and Moses. Now the people of Israel, it started with trouble and it started with the, with the people of Israel. I mean, these people are one of the most stiff-necked people I've ever seen. I, 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 I can't understand. God brought them out of Egypt and he brought them out of Egypt with great deliverance. Plagues upon plagues. Plagues upon plagues hit the people of Egypt just for the sake of the Israelites. God proved beyond every shadow of doubt that he was really God with the Israelites and he was the God of Israel. He proved it beyond every shadow of doubt. Look, I mean, they, they come to water and then he, he opens the sea for them to walk on dry ground and pushes their enemy, uh, layers the enemy into the water and then let the water swallow them up. So the horse and the rider both fell into the sea and they died. They came after the Israelites with chariots, but they all died and perished over there. God had proven beyond every shadow of doubt that he was God until they came to one place. And they came to the place where they needed water. In Numbers chapter 20 verse 11, they came to the place where they needed water. Twice in their life they needed water. One of them God said to Moses, touch the rod, the rock. And God said, I'm going to bring you water out of stone. And water flowed. And it, it, it satiated everybody. Everybody was satisfied. Everybody's thirst was quenched by the water that came. Then the second thing, another time there was um, a crisis of water shortage. And the crisis of water shortage, look at what they did. Anytime there's trouble with the Israelites, this is what they do. Number one, they attack God's chosen leader. That was Moses. They came against him. And they said, we should have died in Egypt. And they spoke and they rose up and they talked and they talked. As for people, you know, the people of Israel, their biggest problem, why they, they never entered the promised land, all those who left Egypt never entered the promised land, just about three, or, uh, three people, only three, a dog, a servant, and dry bones. Dog, Caleb, loyalty. Joshua, servant, when he said, choose you this day whom you will serve, dry bones, the bones of Joseph. Out of the multitude of people who came out of Egypt, only these three people, loyalty, service, and faithfulness. That is Joseph and Revelation, Joseph. Now, and the Bible said they can talk, you know, and they talk and they spoke against Moses. And in actual fact, they were speaking against God. And guess what they were telling Moses? It would have been better if we had stayed in Egypt. Stayed in bondage, stayed in slavery, stayed in all that this then it would have been better if we had stayed there rather than come here and die because of thirst. But here comes the snag. Moses in frustration. God was specific to Moses and he said, speak to the rock. But Moses out of frustration and Moses out of anger, tired of the people. The Bible says Moses picked the rod and he hit the rod. He used the rod to hit the rock. Bang! Moses was supposed to speak to the rock. 
But the Bible says he struck the rock. They're two different things. Speak and strike. They're two different things. The first one will speak peaceably. The first one speak authoritatively. The first one speak with love. The first one speak with direction. But the second one react out of anger. React out of frustration. React. Strike out of anger. Strike out of frustration. Strike out of tiredness. I'm tired. Bang. And then God said to Moses, hey, because you did not honor me in the eyes of those people and you struck the rock, you will see the promised land, but you will never enter. You will see the promised land, but you will never enter. I can tell you something. I'm a pastor. Oh, boy. There are some troublemakers. You would always find them. There are people who are just back benches. There are people who just create a fifth column. And all they do is criticize. All they do is mess you up. All they do is complain, 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 complain. And those people are very difficult people to lead. And sometimes as a leader, if you're not very careful, Instead of ministering to them through love, you might be ministering to them out of anger and frustration. So you climb the pulpit, you sort everybody. You'll be ministering out of frustration and instead out of love. You'll be ministering out of anger. And once you lose control, once you lose your mind, once you allow your heart to overrule your mind, you've lost it. Then you begin to do things that you, you regret. You begin to do things that will alienate people. That will pull people away from you. Oh, I've been there. Everybody will tell you that. Of course, I'm no saint. Abba. But guess what? I've learned my lesson. And Moses slapped God before his time. Grace had not yet come for God to be touched that way. When grace came, Jesus was touched. And nobody could say anything. But under the law, you can't touch him that way. Nobody has gotten that permission yet. So because Moses ministered out of frustration, he saw the promised land. His dream. Saw the promised land, but never entered into it. And guess what? You'd be surprised. He prayed and he begged God. And God said, no, don't even make it a prayer topic anymore. Don't even pray about it. I won't change my mind. So Moses also died in the wilderness and was buried like a dog on a man grave. You know what? No matter what happens, yes, be a heart person, but be a mind person also. And sometimes let your mind rule your emotions. But sometimes when you give vent to your emotions, Give vent to your frustrations. You might end up damaging people you shouldn't damage. Can I tell you something? Let your mind rule your heart. Let your mind master your emotions. It will help. But sometimes when you give vent to your emotions, you end up destroying good things that you will need tomorrow. So guess what? Mind over heart. God bless you.